Good evening everyone on Monday goaltender Craig Kowalski gets called to the crease in Carolina becoming the third Everblade this season promoted to the NHL pretty sweet gig for K wall. However, it leaves a rather bitter taste in the mouth of the blades promotion staff after having already dubbed this evening as Craig Kowalski super card night. The first 3000 fans through the door receiving the giveaway. As for who receives the call in net, Justin Peters just down from Albany protecting the pipes against visiting South Carolina. Nothing makes a new goalie feel right at home like some support in the first Jared Lucan from Dustin Johnner and then just 34 seconds later, it's Derek Damon one timer blades take a 2 one lead through one. However, South Carolina stings the blades in overtime 7-6. Is your final that we talked about K wall. He's now stuck behind John Graham in Carolina. K wall does dress tonight, but gets no PT. Graham though gets the start and some help from Scott Walker. Carolina goes up 2 one. The Battle of the Blades two parent teams goes to the Canes 3 one is your final elsewhere. A sea of red washing over Hammond Stadium this afternoon as fans of the St. Louis Cardinals flock to Fort Myers to see baseballs. World champions less than five months since catching the Tigers by the tail in the fall classic. The St. Louis Cardinals spread their wings and soar on into Southwest Florida for their only visit of this spring. World Series MVP David Eckstein taking the trip to take on the Twins. This one scoreless early. The former Florida Gator facing AL Cy Young Award winner Johan Santana Eckstein drops one into the corner and left. Good for a stand up double cards threatening now with runners at second and third, but on Santana's 28th birthday. He celebrates getting Chris Duncan swinging to end it. Johan two hits, no runs through four. Bottom four now. Twins draw first blood. Former Miracle Man Alexi Casilla with a line shot to center. That scores Tory Hunter as the Twins go up two zip. The champs do get two of their own in the top of the fifth, but they never score again. Minnesota ruffles the Cardinals' feathers 5 2. Your final. More from our fine feathered friends, the Blue Jays over the Red Sox in a colorful affair from Dunedin. One zip the final. Sox fall down. Toronto starter AJ Burnett strong. Five K's, only two hits in four innings pitched for the Jays. And keeping with birds of prey, first Cardinals, then Blue Jays now. Eagles as the FTC women's basketball program is flying sky high, soaring to historic heights and up next they'll nest in Nebraska in hopes of hatching the school's first ever national title. Thanks to a 13 point decision over Delta State and some 4000 fans, which was a record on Monday night. FGCU wins the South Region Championship as such. The Eagles are in the Elite Eight, where it'll take three more wins to raise a banner and even more interest. Hopefully we'll carry over. Uh, you know, it's all started a few years ago. It's been a building process, but this team deserves a lot of credit for uh, getting a lot of people in our campus excited and a lot of people in the community excited. And the Eagle excitement now continues, as we said, in Kearney, Nebraska, with the national quarterfinals, Middle America, but top of the world. FGCU will see fellow number one North Dakota in their next game, set for next Wednesday at 9 p.m. our time. A win, and the Eagles are in the final four. Now Florida State had designs on dancing in the final four or at least the final 64 until the tourney committee burst their bubble instead of punching their ticket, leaving Leonard Hamilton's Knowles one letter short. No NCAAs, instead the NIT for FSU and Al Thornton State at home hosting Toledo and here is Al Thornton come fly with me. Knowles up five Thornton with 24. That's a game high 77 61 Florida State moves on. They'll see Michigan on Thursday and we are right back after this. Good evening everyone after spending Tuesday dealing at Craig Kowalski Supercards tonight. The Everblades cut the deck and distribute Ernie Hartley bobblehead dolls. The first 2500 fans on hand find in their hand a smaller version of Big Ern. Of course, just how good is the likeness of Hartley? Well, you tell me the doll on the left, real Ernie on the right minus the mouthpiece. Not too bad. Meanwhile, from a plastic figurine to a stone wall. Hopefully 30 year old Jamie Holden making his first start in net for the blades. He gets the nod with K wall up in Carolina and Justin Peters having been recalled to Albany already down one zip to visiting South Carolina. Holden less than golden. That one off the skate of Chris Diamond in the second. Holden allows another about a minute later. A total of four on the night. 
as the Blades fall 5-2 to the Rays. Since K-Wall's been promoted to the NHL, three Everblades goalies have combined to allow 11 goals in just two games. Meanwhile, from the power play to the double play and with the tossing of today's first pitch at City of Palms Park, the Red Sox have officially hit the second half of their spring schedule. 17 games in the books, another 17 to come on the base paths, beginning with the boys out of Bradenton. The Pittsburgh Pirates in town to take on the Sox. Wall with the monster making nice, nice, but then look at this. About face and right in the back on the field now, and this is really what spring training is all about, the fundamentals. Like the rundown play, Mike Lowell slaps the tag. That keeps the run from scoring. We're scoreless early. Bottom four now, still scoreless. Len, this is your part right here. Pay attention. Lowell at the dish with the runner on. You dropped the bomb on me. Well done, Len. You just outstanding. A two-run shot to left. Sox up two zip. Pittsburgh comes back in the fifth. This should be a double play, but instead Chris Duffy hustles to beat the throw at first. That allows Jose Bautista to score the tying run. The Pirates get one more for the win. 3-2 the final. Boston officially 7-8 and eight on the spring. Now, in addition to the Pirates and Sox, a former Cubby at City of Palms today, Hall of Famer hurler. Ferguson Jenkins meeting and greeting with fans, also pitching around some memorabilia. The former Cy Young Award winner is touring camps across the country this spring, raising money for dozens of charities through his Fergie Jenkins Foundation, a major league vet of 19 seasons. Jenkins has yet to lose his grip on the game. After I retired 25 years ago, I was a fan. Now I'm still a fan. I'm a fan of the game. I, I like to see the game played correctly. But like anything, you see uh, good fans come here to support their ball club. And a lot of these people here, and, and especially in the Fort Myers area, are all Boston fans. So they probably live in the Massachusetts area or, or maybe Maine. They want to come down here and see their favorite player play. And then they head back up north where it's cold and wait for the season to start. Of course, the spring season still underway at this point. Tonight, the Twins in Tampa taking on the Yanks and Legends Field. Well, forgettable for the Twinkies so far. They lose up there for the second time this spring. 4-1 your score. The Twins back at Hammond tomorrow to host the Orioles. Meanwhile, stationary stores across the country with a run on number two pencils and erasers this week as filling out basketball brackets teeters between hobby and headache. How many upsets do you pull? Who slides on the Cinderella slipper? When will the first number one go down? Well, the Gators, of course, have earned one of the coveted top seeds as they begin their run to the repeat. During the regular season, Florida spent eight weeks atop the national poll more than any other club in the country. Just part of the reason that Billy's boys are second to none. You know, we feel like the, the whole body of work this season from non-conference to conference to the SEC Tournament Championship game, I think our guys have played very, very well. And hopefully we'll go out and, and play, you know, like a number one seed. And the Gators will begin to defend their seeding and their national title on Friday when they meet number 16 Jackson State at 9.50 p.m. And we are right back after this.